Okay, myself and Jamie have come up from the college. We've come up to Clemsey Farm to see Tom, see his beautiful Puddle Dub Empire. We're going to have a look at the pigs. He's going to show us all the bacons, gammons that he produces, and basically just see what you guys are going to be eating tonight, how it's produced, and all the time and effort that's went into it. So, Tom, thank you very much for allowing us to come up today. My pleasure. And uh, let's have a wee look round. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go oh. for it. So at the moment, Tom, how many pigs overall do you think you've got in the farm? Uh, well, it'll be 100 sows in all progeny, which will be about 1,000, 1, uh -huh. maybe 1,100 pigs. Small ones and big ones. We've got young pigs in here, but they're always entertaining. Jeez, oh. How old are they pigs in there, Tom? In there? Yeah. Yeah, about 10, 12 weeks. We will get smelly. And we've got older pigs in here. Now there's there's a boar in here and he gets a little bit playful, so don't right. don't panic. It's alright, Jamie's here for that. We can that's what I brought. <laughs> I, I think you've got to agree these are all quite happy looking pigs in no, here. Definitely. They're having a good time. They're well fed, they're well cared for, they're comfortable. Uh-huh. And they've got lots of straw. And they're, a lot of them are sleeping. What, what's the actual breed, Tom, of the pigs? Okay, well, it's a bit of a mixture of breeds in there. There's a bit of large white, a bit of land race, but a fair amount of duroc. Okay. And you can see there's a number of pigs have got black patches on them. And there's a, there's a almost, that's a 50% duroc pig, that brown one that's okay. lying over there. Right. Uh, the duroc is, I would describe the duroc as the Aberdeen Angus of the pig world. Okay. Because it puts marbling into what would otherwise be very lean meat. Okay. And I, I, I know people say that fat is, is unhealthy, but in order to have flavoursome meat, there does need to be a proportion of fat, and it needs to be through the leaner tissues as well. And unfortunately, your normal British commercial pig is very, very lean. Uh -huh. She's been selected to provide um, fast-growing lean meat. And unwittingly, they have produced very dense, uh -huh. tough meat as they go. So I think we're sort of reversing that trend. You can definitely see, Tom, they're very well content. There's plenty of room for them. Well, we're going to, come on, we're going to have a look at a few more. OK. We're going to have a look at a few more sows around here uh -huh. and then some growing pigs. And when, they're, when you've got the sows and that, do you very much just leave that in nine times out of ten, the, the litter's all natural, you don't have to do anything? Oh, no, you, you need to manage the pigs. You, you, uh -huh. you know, the, 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 the sows are pretty damn good at knowing what they're supposed to do, but uh -huh. remember, they are giving birth to quite large numbers, yeah. so management is quite important. Now th this is this is where the breeding takes place. Right. The sows are weaned, they're brought into these pens and they get contact with uh, real live boars. But we actually use a lot of artificial insemination. Oh, Again, right. it gives us a uh, fine control of what we're doing. Okay. We can use the breed we want to use and we can get the timing spot on. Right. It's amazing how when uh, nature's left her own devices, she gets it uh, she gets it wrong at times. Right. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't think I want to ask too much how you actually do it, to be honest. But well, so these are the sows, and then you've got some growing, uh, quite yeah, a lot of we'll growing pigs. The, the the females are, are selected because of the ability of their mother. Right. They're going to be replacement females, and if they've come from a sow who's prolific milky and has good mothering qualities then there's every chance that their daughters will be exactly the okay. same so it's you know it, and, and that way we've actually improved the herd quite dramatically uh -huh. just selecting from within our own little herd picking the best so what um, roughly what age are they then these pigs will be about five months of age right and that's and that's, and that's why you're feeding there. them the, the two and a half kilo. They're, they're, well, they're actually being fed ad lib. In behind those uh, walls are um, ad libitum 
feeders, okay. which are kept topped up by that uh, feed pipeline there. So the pigs can eat as much as they like. Right. But at this stage of their lives, they will be growing at something like 700, 750 grams per day. Right, okay, sir. And uh, taking in uh, a kilo and a half to two and a half kilos of feed in order to achieve that. Right. We grow the food for the pigs as well. I think that's quite a significant thing. All right, okay. You know, it's quite important. Yeah. Um, all the barley's homegrown. We buy in a bit of wheat, buy in a bit of barley, uh, soya, um, minerals and vitamins. And it's all mixed, up, ground and mixed on the farm and then fed to the pigs. And what made you go down that route? Well, we've, we, we have the land to, to do it, plus the muck from the pigs all goes back on the grain growing land. So it's, so it's a nice little tight cycle. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. It's, it's a very healthy cycle and it cuts our dependence on um, purchased fertilizers. Uh -huh. um, and w we know exactly what we're feeding our pigs. And uh, it's not always the cheapest uh, diet, but it seems to work quite well. Well, if you're getting the great produce at the end of it and the, the, be, the good quality bacon, gammon joints, bellies, sure. that's what that's what it all well, comes we, down we to. We are it. what we eat and so are the pigs. If they eat good ah. food then you, they should produce good pork. Absolutely. So we've just been to see the pigs, Tom. Now you've got your, your obviously your, your cabins up here where you do all your work, yeah. etc. Et what exactly goes on here then? Yeah, well we've got three cabins there. On the left is the bacon cutting and packing room. Uh -huh. The girls uh, temper, slice and pack our bacon. Right. Uh, this room here, the guys are uh, cutting up fresh meat uh -huh. and the curing goes on there and then we also make our sausages in there on a, th on a Thursday. Right. Uh, it's probably the busiest room, uh -huh. <laughs> most activity in there. Now, the sausages on a Thursday, is there a specific reason for it being a Thursday? Or is it just that you need a couple of days before the farmer's markets? Well, it's it's in order to get everything completed before the farmers markets uh -huh. and also our wholesale uh, customers like the stuff delivered on Friday so that they have it in for Friday afternoon and Saturday which are obviously the best selling okay. opportunities. So and when you take your pigs and you send them off to the abattoir, mm -hmm. do they come back a half pig and you butcher them down here? or do they Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. The, 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 we take our pigs to St Andrew's abattoir. Right, okay. And we bring them back on, a, they, they go up on a Tuesday and we bring them back on a Friday and the pigs are, are split from top to toe uh, and then the guys take them in Monday morning and uh, cut them into their front end, middles, back end uh -huh. and then they're deboned and then if necessary the skin's removed. Right. right we have a wee closer look inside here? Sure, Come on. absolutely. This is the uh, fresh meat cutting room. Okay. It's also where we cure the the middles into bacon and the legs into gammons. Right. And how long does the curing process take place? Well, the, the initial curing takes place quite quickly. It's sort of uh, uh, done the day that the, the meat is um, cut, but then it's allowed to mature in storage for anything up to three weeks to gain a bit of flavour and a, 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 to dry a bit and then um, it will be smoked or it will then just go straight for, for slicing and packing okay. as unsmoked. Right, so and whereabouts your smoking take place? All right, well we'll show the smoker in. in here ne in next door. There's the there we have uh, bacon middles being cured, uh -huh. uh, being smoked, sorry, bacon middles being smoked. Uh, they're just about ready. You can see they're starting to take on a nice golden colour. Uh -huh. um, so we'll, we'll probably smoke somewhere in the region of about 30 or so bacon middles a week. Uh, probably about 20 legs of gammon. Uh, and shanks and ribs and pancetta and all sorts of other things. And, and they all differ right. depending on the size. How yeah. long you smoke them for? Yeah, well, it's it's it, it's a whole day job. It's uh -huh. a whole day job. Yeah. But it's a cracking smell anyway. Absolutely. It's catching the back of the throat. And what what, you, what do you smoke them with? Well, there we are. There's the old chippings that are used. It's Jimmy comes to this. All graded. It's um, hassop, 
uh, full, full HACCP, it's been produced under uh, hygienic conditions, oh, it's been stored dry, and then we um, put it in the smoke box. Uh -huh. Oh dear. Oh, no. Right. Which has been moistened, and then we set fire to it, and uh, then we set it a-going. Brilliant. And the air draws the uh, air over the top of the smouldering shavings. The smoke's introduced into the chamber, circulates through the chamber, and smokes the bacon. Brilliant. And it goes back up to the other cabinet and gets sliced yeah. after that point. Yep, that's correct. Okay. So, uh, and how long have you actually been doing all the, the baking, well, the we, smoking, and the We started here it? in 2000. Uh, and we got our own smoker in 2003. Right. Uh, prior to that, I was getting it done by a third party, but we've always tried to do as many of the jobs as we can ourselves. That way we have full control and we're the only ones who to blame if it goes yeah. wrong, you know. And what's your most popular seller at the bacon? Well, the smoke, the smoke bacon, the smoke middle bacon is really very popular uh -huh. indeed. I think we probably sell more of that than we do of the unsmoked now, yeah. Uh, I was going to say, um, my favourite's the streaky. I usually get the streaky when I get it off streaky the Streaky bacon, yeah. Lots of flavour, a little bit of fat uh -huh. gives the flavour. And then these girls full time? Uh, in here, or is that a couple of days a week? Or? Well, we do three days um, bacon cutting and packing, uh, uh -huh. and one day sausage making and packing, and then one day putting all the orders together. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are bacon cutting days. Uh -huh. The work is, is all fairly labour intensive, shall we say. Yeah. Uh, and I guess I guess the advantage to that is that you can see very clearly what you're doing, and uh, every piece has got somebody's uh, interested eye looking at it at some uh -huh. stage. So faults are picked up easily. Um, quality uh, quality faux pas are picked up pretty pretty easily too. So right. you know it's just it's just another uh, attempt to make as good a job as we can. Mm -hmm. And as regards to like when you're selling your, your bacon, your pieces and stuff like that, obviously you go to the farmer's market, are you getting much sales from like uh, hotels or local restaurants? Are you doing retail stuff or is that? We, we're, we are uh, supplying some catering outlets. Uh, they're number on five, but we go as far afield as Glasgow and Helensborough. Uh, it's nice little delis that really appreciate our, our uh -huh. bacon. Well, I, I, you're preaching at the converted. I, I've been a big lover of the, the bacon for a wee while. My mum and that used to get, when I used to stay at home, my mum used to get it all the time. Spot on. Spot on. Thank you. So, you've got the bacon, you've done your gammon, you've your smokehouse, but you also do some of your own cooking here as we well, do, is that right? Yeah, yeah we do. We do. Right. Have a wee look at that. Go over and have a look at that. What are you making today, Emma? I'm making pies today. Picnic pies. Picnic pies. It'll okay. be coming out of the oven in about 12 minutes. The, the picnic pies quest, it's, it's becoming a hero product, I would say. It's, uh -huh. it's a really nice pie. I know Handry's pork pies aren't uh, normally associated with Scottish cuisine, but as pork producers, we need to try and make everything that we can and they're, they're meeting a, a very uh, appreciative audience, actually. The, the, the picnic pie is getting a reputation of its own. What, generally, what else, Emma, you, is your, you doing? You cams in here and then slice them all down and pack them. Uh -huh. And the picnic pies, and I do scotch eggs and minced rounds and steak pies. Okay. All made from pork. All made from pork. Yes. Ah, right. Okay. And they, are they go to the farmers markets as well, or they, they go to delis. Okay. Cool. You've got a cracking farm here, Tom. How long have you actually been farming here yourself? Uh, well, I started farming in 1975, uh, but my family have been here since 1905. Okay. And we've farmed in this part of the. Uh, of Fife since the early 1700s, as far as we can tell. So uh -huh. it's in the blood. 
and it was like well docu documised a few years ago about the farming and stuff like that. The whole process of setting up puddle dub pork and doing all this, this is to supplement your farm, to help your, is this to help your farm? Well the, the farms always had pigs, uh, for better or for worse, and oh, back in the late 90s, uh, pig job was really, really dire and it got to the stage where we had to do something pretty major and we'd tried everything really, uh, but we had never tried processing our own animals and uh, you know the farmers market movement was coming on so we had a willing marketplace and so it seemed the logical thing to do to give it a try and that's what we've been doing, we've given it a try ever since and yep. just gradually building it and growing it to, until we've got to the stage now where we're using all the animals that the farm's producing. Uh -huh. And is your plan just to sort of plateau out of this, or would you like to expand? No, no, you, no, no. Are you happy I'd, with I'd, what you got? No, you can't. You can't stand still. I'm afraid we have to keep keep growing forward. Uh, I guess our next step is to to try and get a retail presence of our own. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see an awful lot of growth left in the farmers' markets, and uh, wholesaling's all very well, but uh, it's not. There's not a big margin business, so. Uh, our own retail outlet would be would be the next sensible move. Thanks very much, Tom. It's been really interesting. I can only speak for myself. I don't know about you, Jamie, but I've learned loads today. Yeah, it's been great. It's my first time visiting our pig farm, and I'm going to appreciate it my next week and roll. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank, thanks, guys. That's and really good of you. Anything else you want to say to people about your produce, and hopefully they've seen from the film. Well. I just that it's it's nice to get the chance to take you guys round and, and point out that it is quite a, a lengthy, uh, time consuming and uh, a lot of effort goes into uh, what we do and it's just, it's, it's nice that it's appreciated, thank you. We'll definitely appreciate it. Okay. Thanks very much Tom, okay. cheers. Thanks gents. Okay, Bye now. Right, we'll catch you later. Catch you later.